Welcome back to Cottage Treasures Quilting. I'm Alay Dupuis. Behind the camera is my wife, Delilah Dupuis. And today for you, we have a stunning Tony Whitney quilt called Who's What Where uh, by Tony Whitney. Um, this is used with Steamacine. This is all fusible um, and it's all applique raw edge and um, simple free motion quilting. Beautiful. Once you've done one Tony Whitney, you can do them all. Um, you can see the wood duck here on the side. This is one we're currently working on right now. We just have to build a sandwich and finish it up. But we're going to take you step by step through this quilt of who's what where. We have patterns on our website. Um, if you are into the pattern or if you'd like the full kit ready to go with the stunning fabrics that Tony Whitney has picked out herself. We have these on our website at cottagetreasures.store. So without further ado, we're going to jump right into this and show you step by step on how to create this beautiful quilt. All right, so we're busting into who, what, where from Tony Whitney. Um, and we're going to go through what is contained inside of this kit uh, when you buy it through us. So we'll start off over here. You get um, your 3D. This is the cover of the pattern. This is just going to show you the beautiful earth tone um, batiks that she has chosen to make this look as realistic as possible. And I, I believe Tony Whitney did a fantastic job on that. On the back page of the pattern, it is going to, or not the pattern, but the kit, it's going to tell you the supplies, the fabric that's uh, required that comes in the kit, as well as the supplies you're going to need uh, to build this beautiful uh, kit. Um, she comes with a little color guide here. So it's got every color that they have put in the kit and a number, and the number will correspond with the instructions when you're placing the pieces. It then comes with these wonderful instructions, um, 11 by 17 paper um, with instructions on both sides to help you uh, place your pieces, number your pieces, and uh, how to start this quilt as a whole. Right here we have the piecing guide. So this is the whole uh, quilt top broken down into each number. Um, there's, it'll go through the instructions with you, but uh, like R stands for raccoon, so you know that all the R pieces are the raccoon. Then the one piece, the number after it, so an R1 is how you place once you're building the pattern together. And then the number after the dash is the actual color that you are using for that specific piece. You will not cut any of this. This is going to stay whole the whole time you're building. What you do get included as well is these broken down into 11 by 17 pieces of paper. And these are the ones you're going to trace onto your steam seam to uh, then cut those pieces out later. Uh, recommended a light board if you have one. If you don't have a light board and you have a window um, and it's nice sunny out, we've done this before, before we got our light board, tape that piece a paper to the window and then lay your steam seam over top to then trace. Um, we will be using an applique piecing sheet for this um, for this project so I recommend if you don't have one to get one. If you don't you can use parchment paper from underneath uh, in the kitchen. We used that for many years before we finally got a, uh, a applique sheet. So uh, let's dive right on into this. We're going to go ahead and take these fabrics over to our ironing board and iron out the creases. And then once those are all um, flat and ready to go, then we will start the process of tracing our patterns onto our steam seam. Okay, we finished ironing. So we've laid our pieces down over here just in uh, color order as per the chart. Um, you can see all of these nice, beautiful earth tones over here. These are going to be used 1 through 12, are going to be used for uh, the raccoon bodies. Um, around the trunk hole and the leaves and the foliage. Over here, 13 and 12, these are gonna be used for the bordering and binding. So you'll be cutting these into the strips indicated by the instructions. Over here, we have number 14, which is white muslin. This is gonna be used for an underlay. Now, because you're placing some spots like the snout, um, some of the, the eyebrow, because it's so dark, the fabric behind, there will be an underlay in behind that so that you don't get the black or the dark colors busting through your white colors. Um, and then you've got this green fabric here, number six. Um, this is going to be what you build your quilt on top of. So uh, the raccoons, um, the knot in the tree, 
um, the grain and the tree is all going to be on top of this fabric. You actually won't see this fabric at all when you're done your finished product. There is a chunk of this that's over there that's used in the foliage and the leaves. So um, yeah, once you've ironed them, lay them out and uh, when you read the instructions, it'll start to uh, develop in your brain how you're going to move forward with uh, using these pieces. All right, so step one, we are going to transfer our patterns onto our steam seam. So no cutting, we will not do any cutting right now. Once it's on the steam seam, no cutting. Don't worry about cutting anything at this point. Right now we are gonna work on transferring the four sheets of patterns onto some steam seam. Um, I've got all the tools I'll be using right in front of me here. Uh, steam seam two is what's recommended in the pattern as well as what we usually use and we sell on our site. Um, there's many benefits to this one and I'll go through those in a second. Um, some tape. Uh, tape's going to be used on your light board and the pattern here to hold everything in place or on a window and your preference of a pen or a pencil. Um, I'm going to be using a pencil. The guide actually asks to use a pencil as well. So um, let's go ahead and start here. So these little grains, the wood grains here, we have already traced out some of the raccoons ourselves. I'm going to demonstrate some of the grain here. You can see that there's some hash marks in some spots by themselves. The pattern says it's not necessary to um, do hashes. You can just draw right over top of them. What those are indicating is that on the pattern later, those will be overlapped by other fabrics. I am going to go ahead and hash them anyways, just to ensure proper placement when I am uh, building the quilt top. So. Um, Remember to keep your, you want to save as much steam a seam as you possibly can. So I'm going to park this in the corner and up against the edge right here. And then it'll save me this chunk for, for later. So steam a seam two is nice, to, nice uh, a lot nicer than the original two because of how thin it is. It comes with the grid, which is nice for placing, your, placing it on top of a pattern. Um, its bond is super strong and permanent. Um, it leaves your edges un unfinished and doesn't fray them. I find it gum it doesn't gum up as bad as the other steam seam in your machine. It's easy to use. You can machine wash it. Um, it's pliable too, so you can stick it a couple times before you fuse it and um, reuse it over and over. That way, you can put it in a printer if you're printing off a pattern on top of it. Um, it's it's just really nice to use. So remember, grid up. So this yellow grid up, that's what you want to do when you're tracing. So I've got this positioned where I want it. I'm going to go ahead and start tracing. Remember to write your numbers with the corresponding piece. You want to remember to keep those numbers in there. So I know they're outside of them. I'm going to end up writing them inside. So I just write like a T5, 12. And then we're going to go ahead and start tracing. And then after them, you have to tracing. So I want to take a second to talk about Tony Whitney's wonderful patterns. We've displayed them all um, here for you to touch on how they're very similar. They're all built the same. So um, these videos we're doing with uh, who, what, where with the raccoons and we're going to be doing with the wood duck are exactly the same. And you can see all these wonderful patterns. She's got the sea otters over here, sweethearts, the giraffes, snowy egret. Um, we've got the heron, the great blue heron, uh, tortuga, carousel horse, and the hummingbirds, which we've featured in quilt shows across Canada quite often. Um, Tony, Whitney, and her husband Frank, this is their business that they've built, and uh, they're just gorgeous, and we love how universal they are. So these videos help you learn how to build all of these quilts. Um, so here's the wood duck, just to give you a sense they will all come like this if you get the full kilt, kit pattern which is available online on our store cottagetreasures.store they all come the same way they all come with the fabric in beautiful uh, display like this they will all come with the color chart 
They will all come with the front cover page uh, that you can use as a reference, as well as it'll come with the, the cutouts that you'll use to trace all your pieces and cut them out. And it'll also come with uh, the big template in order to place all your pieces in the right spot. So we will be doing this duck right away. This part will probably show up in both videos. Um, but we just wanted to touch on how wonderful and how many uh, great options there are and how if you've done one, you can do them all. Okay, so we have finished tracing all of our patterns using those four 11 by 17 sheets and laying our steam seam over top. Um, I found, like I demonstrated when you tape it, um, there will be times where you're going to take the tape off and you're going to be moving your steam seam around. Uh, to let's face it try and save as much steam a seam as possible. It took about It would it should take about eight of these um, Eight by eleven sheets eight and a half by eleven um, by me moving it around. I got it in seven um, There is one section of the pattern, which is the long ones um, You can see that there I just taped the steam a seam two sheets together in order to get uh, the five or six long ones together um, it's not going to matter that they're not one complete piece once we've uh, ironed them down. So now we're going to loosely cut these patterns out of the steam -a seam And we're talking loosey-goosey, so you are literally just going to cut around the pattern. Don't worry about doing any of those really tight cuts in between the points until we get to the point where we've already attached them to our fabric. So just keep going. Just, you know, it might take an hour or two of just cutting out loose pieces like that. So you can see the numbers. P2, R111, L1, L18 3D, and then there's a number after, like a 2, 13, 4, 4. We talked about this earlier, that's your color. So we've taken our piece of four fabric here, and I have my five pieces. I've checked the pattern just to make sure the instructions that there are only five pieces that go on to number four. And you are going to, with the grid pattern up again, you're going to lay them on top. These batiks are the same quality on both sides, so I don't have to worry about making sure that I have the right side facing the right direction. If you've chosen your own fabrics, when you're doing this first steam -a seam part, you want the good side to be upside down. You want to be fusing this to the bad side so that when you peel and you flip it back over for the stick, you now have the good side facing up. So they're all loosey-goosey cut here, so you just wanna make sure that those four pieces are gonna fit. And I got lots of room here for these four pieces. Uh, you might have to trim around some extra ones, uh, these five pieces here, sorry. You might wanna trim extra around some later, depending on how much room you have left, but this is what it's going to look like and we are then going to iron these down to this piece of fabric. So I'm going to cut out all my patterns, steam -a seam patterns before I do that. And just a quick thing to do is grab some baggies because some of these pieces are very small and if you can't keep them together, even this is very small. As you're cutting them, just toss them in a bag so you don't lose them. So I'm gonna cut all these out and then we'll get ready to start um, ironing these down. All right, now that we have drawn on all of our steam -a seam our patterns, um, now, and we cut them all out nice and loosey-goosey, we didn't cut them, um, you know, finicky yet. We'll get to that later. We have now laid them down with the grid facing up. Um, you peel off the back of the steam -a seam and you follow the instructions onto which fabric you will lay down your patterns. Tony was fantastic in giving you the exact number of um, pieces that should be on to each fabric. Uh, like let's say number four is supposed to have five, there's five here, as well as there's five total pieces. She gives you the exact number. So once you're um, grouping them together into their designated fabric, you can go through to make sure you have all your pieces. 
So we've peeled off the back layer of the steam seam and we've stuck them all down. This is a great time to sit back and look to make sure that you have enough space on your fabric for all of your pieces, as well as double check to make sure that you did trace all of the pieces. So these are now ready to iron down now that they've been stuck. And um, we just thought we would show you to see how uh, much extra fabric you have on some of your um, some of your pieces and then some of the other ones are quite close so you do have to trim down some edges. And then you can see over here our leftover fabrics. Um, this one is going to be used, this number six green here, this is going to be used for making a steam -a seam um, sandwich together because these are going to be used on our 3D leaves. And then the rest here, you've got number nine here is going to be the background that we are going to build the quilt onto. And you've got your um, your binding, your sorry, your background and your binding, uh, your borders. So um, once you steam all these together, you're re ready to cut them out. Once you cut them out, it's time to put them into groupings. So put all the leaves together, put all the raccoons together in their separate ones. So everything that has to do with the raccoon is going to be an R1, R2, or R3, being that there's three raccoons on Tony Whitney's pattern. Um, put them into their groups, raccoon number one, all the ones in the group group number two and all the ones into raccoon group number three um, and then you'll have the wood grain as well so you should have uh, the three raccoons the leaves foliage and um, the actual tree grain itself all right so we are going to demonstrate putting the steam seam down onto your fabric I have a small applique pressing sheet here this is strictly um, along the process later, but as of right now for getting our patterns down on our fabric um, In case anything's sticking over the edge, you don't want it to stick down to your ironing board So um, I just put this underneath whenever I'm working with steam a seam So we have our four or five pieces of number four fabric that are going to lay down I'm going to peel off the back side. So remember the grid pattern facing up So you're just going to peel that back side off it does have a bit of a stick to it and there is one more section you'll be able to peel off but that's later after you've adhered this down so we're going to lay this down and it does stick none of these have been um, ironed yet but they do have just been laid down so you'll go ahead and do that and then you'll bring your iron over and put approximately 15 to 30 seconds of heat in one spot no steam um, this will depend on your iron our iron here, this is our backup iron, our other one just broke. Uh, this one gets very hot, so um, I'm just going to move around quite a bit so I don't burn our fabric. And those are now stuck to that fabric for good. So now that those are ironed down, it makes it a lot stiffer and easier for cutting. So this is the process where you would then start to cut out and be very, you know, now you're wanting to make sure that you get those exact cuts you want. And it's a lot tougher now and less loosey-goosey now that the steam -a seam has been ironed down to your fabric. You can go ahead and iron all of your pieces down to your fabrics before you start cutting or cut as you want. Um, it doesn't make uh, much of a difference but make sure that once you've cut them out if you're dealing with small pieces you do pop them back again in that Ziploc baggie so you don't uh, end up going on the hands and knees looking underneath the ironing table to see where that piece went. So I'm going to cut all these out and, um, and then we'll get ready for the next step. All right, so we have now cut out all of our pieces and as you can see them all laid out here in their color families. Um, a couple things to note is if you are going to use pencil to trace, you are going to want to wash your hands between each cut of the white pieces because that lead will transfer over onto the white pieces. So just keep that in mind if you are going to use lead. Another thing you can see, so these are all, this is all fabric up. You can see on the bottom here is where the paper piecing with the original drawn template is still and its number is still on there so this is just us showing you what they look like when they've put into their color glue groups 
Now we're going to break them down from there, flip them back over so you have your numbers, um, and we're going to break them into their designated groups as per uh, raccoon 1 through 26, raccoon number 1, 2, and 3, all the leaves, all the grain, and so forth. So um, we're going to go ahead and do that now, so we'll just do it real quick. And just like that, we now have them in order of how they're going to be placed onto the quilt top. We have our leaves over here. Uh, we have our knot and grains over here with our T's and our K's. Um, these are our little uh, finicky pieces, like um, the little of the eyeballs, um, like eyelashes and the paws. They don't tell you which raccoon they're going to with an R on them, but they do with the corresponding number. And then we have raccoon one, two, and three exactly on how they're ordered from piece one to I believe it's 25 or 23. So this is how you'd want to lay this out to get ready to start piecing them together and we'll go reread the instructions again just to make sure that we're ready to start assembling to the top of our quilt or I believe some of the raccoons actually get built on their own on your applique sheet before you bring them over to the quilt top. I want to walk through the steps of the vinyl instruction in Tony Whitney's Who, What, Where uh, piecing guide instructions. So the vinyl is nice because of how many layers there are and the way she's numbered her fabric like R1 for Raccoon 1, 1 through 26. It's telling you that one's going to be at the bottom and you're going to be building these layers up. So there's going to get a point where it's going to be very hard to tell uh, your exact placement. So she recommends in the instructions that you build a vinyl over top of the piecing guide. So what we've used is just a plastic bag here, it's clear, um, and we've cut two edges on it so we can open it up, and it has allowed us to develop a piece like this. So you can see we have taped this to the top of our piecing guide and laid it top over top. So if now we use our light board just to help us trace, um, but if you don't have a light board as well, you can tape your piecing guide to a window, tape your vinyl over top, which actually would be more comfortable when you're tracing standing up than opposed to me leaning over when I start tracing this. So this is a very helpful guide because as you start to go, you're going to be able to, like R1 for Raccoon 1, um, you lift your guide when you're on your applique sheet and you have your guide over top and then you seam that one, seam a seam that one down, right? And then you would lay your guide down um, and you'd look for R, R1 number two and then you would use your piecing guide here to locate where it is and lay that one down. And then as you're building up is when you'd be able to lay this back over top with your traced lines to see uh, where your next piece needs to go and where the one that's now hidden underneath is. So I'm going to go ahead and trace this out using a permanent marker. Um, nice fine tip would be the best and um, then I'll show you once I've done tracing what it's going to look like. So I've taped down my corners uh, just to keep my vinyl from moving around on me and um, you don't have to write down the numbers to your corresponding pieces if you don't want to. It's not necessary. Tony Whitney says you don't have to. Uh, write all these numbers down. I'm not going to. I'm just going to trace out the whole raccoon. Okay, so I've drawn a couple sections here of the face, and I'm just going to lift the tape off here just to show you what it's going to look like. Just a blank piece of paper underneath just to show you. Right, so as you're building, this is gonna make it a lot easier to be able to lift this vinyl and um, place your pieces as you go. So I'm gonna to continue to trace out um, the, the whole raccoons. I don't think I'm going to bother too much with the leaves and the, and the um, grain of the wood. I'm just gonna focus on these raccoons because I think they're going to be the, the most difficult to place the pieces because of the volume of them. I've finished tracing onto the vinyl. So I know before I had said that I wasn't going to do um, the grain pattern, but I decided to do all of it just because it was going so fast. So you can see here, 
This is what it looks like after you're done tracing. I didn't bother with the numbers. I will have my piecing guide next to me while I'm building. So if I'm not too sure, I'll be going off of those numbers anyways. So you can see it's pretty, it, it took, it didn't take very long, maybe a half an hour. Um, but I do recommend if you start, start from the middle and work your way out so that you're not smudging with your wrist. Um, if you do do a spot and then you want to work somewhere else, um, it does dry. So just give it some time to dry and then you don't have to worry about smudging. So this is the end result and um, we'll move on to the next step. All right, we are ready to, we've cut out all our pieces. Remember we laid them out in order. We are ready to start placing and uh, we're going to start with a raccoon. So we have our applique pressing sheet here that you can get at the majority of quilt stores and online. This will take the heat of the iron, so we'll press our pieces down onto it and we can steam them over on the ironing table and this will take the heat. This is in the cooking section near the wax paper and such and this is parchment paper. You can get this in any grocery store. This can also take a bit of the heat as well if you don't have an applique pressing sheet. So as you can see, um, they both are pretty see-through since we're using our light board to lay down all our pieces. Um, we're going to go ahead and show you what an applique sheet uh, does if you don't have one and you're curious to see us do this. So as per the instructions, we are going to start by building the eyes of raccoon number one here. So you can see the two eyes here. So you're going to take your pieces that match those numbers. Remember that these have all been ironed down to the steam seam. So now we're going to be peeling off the back layer to finally press them into place. So these are all the pieces right here. We're going to be starting with uh, the left eye or the right eye, depending which way you see it. And it's going to start with the first number, which is E1. So the hardest part in this is seems to always be just to peel that last that back layer off of the steam seam just because the pieces are so small. Just got to get a good angle on it. There we go. And we will lay this down on the part on the pressing applique pressing sheet like so. Right, so you can see that E1 is covered. Uh, now you'll notice on the back of this pattern that the majority of this is in the hash marks. That's because it'll be underneath another fabric. And that's why we have to do these in order because they kind of build on top of each other to help you build these. So I'm going to take a little bit of tape here just because my pressing sheet's moving around. And I'm just going to tape my pressing sheet down to my background so it stops moving on me. Just regular scotch tape. All right, so that's E1. E2 is the actual eyeball itself. And you can see the hash marks at the top here. So that top lip there is probably gonna be go under the eyelash so it helps build the eyeball and allow them all to stick together. So peel this back layer off again of the steam seam. And place this as best as you can. Okay, E3 is now the actual eyeball itself. Okay, so I have the vinyl sheet over here now because it is hard to see where the white of the eye is exactly placed. So by laying this vinyl sheet that we drew earlier down, I can see a ballpark of the angle of how it looks with the eyeball. So I have that locked in, so then I'll just pull this sheet back and place that eye using the pin. Just because it's it's such a small piece. Right, and then just give that a push down. It's a little high, I think, just because of the eyelash, so I'll bring it down just a little bit. pretty good. So now an E4, the last piece of this this left eye here, it goes on the very top.
So that's one of the eyes. So I'll continue and I will do the other eye on the other side here. And then we'll bring it over to the iron to give them a press. And then we're actually just going to leave them on the applique pressing sheet while we build the other raccoon. Well, we build the rest of the raccoon. Okay, so we've placed the eyeballs down and built the eyes. So we're just going to quickly follow the steam seam light two instructions and press down for about 10 seconds. This is on our pressing sheet, right? Remember that this can take the heat very well, so um, it's nice and easy to build um, anything with steam seam using a, a applique pressing sheet. So that's about 10 seconds. We are gonna let these cool, but now that we're gonna build uh, the raccoon face over here, we're just gonna leave them on while we're building the raccoon face and they can cool. And then once we're done the raccoon face, we'll peel the eyes off and then place them onto the raccoon. All right, so we've pressed down the eyes, we're leaving them to the side for now, and we are going to start on the raccoon. Now this is very easy with Tony Whitney's um, instructions. It's as easy as one, two, three, really. We're going to start at one, and we're going to build up to the highest number, which I believe is 23 within the raccoon's face. <clears throat> so we're going to start with number one, peel off the back. Now with the way that you cut these, uh, with all the points, it's very easy to place these into place. So we will go ahead, you can see R1 number 1, and this was number R1 number 1. Meaning raccoon number 1, piece number 1 to place. So just follow where the lines are, and then give it a little press down. Right, you're not going to be exactly uh, with the way that you cut your pieces, um, but that's number 1, and we'll go from there. Okay, so I've ironed down the face of the raccoon, and now we're going to peel off the eyes and place them on top. Using the vinyl sheet, if you would like, whichever uh, method, you can go ahead and just place them and see how they look. Um, be careful when you're pulling off these eyes, because they are delicate. And then we will iron them back down once we've placed them. So um, you can easily just take your vinyl sheet real quick. Lay it down over top and get a little bit of an idea for placement. So you can see that the top eyebrow here 
is um, eyelash, sorry, is a, just about to touch the eyebrow. So we'll go ahead and place that accordingly. And it is about, I would say, two, three millimeters away from touching the eyebrow on that side. So that is just about exactly where that eye is going to go. So we'll peel off the other eye, the last one. Again, we'll gauge it, see where it's going. So it is about the same touching the top of the eyebrow right there and then about a mil away over oh let me just readjust this yeah so about the same and then I mean really stand back and just look at the eyes and you'll know if they look a little bit cockeyed that one of them's in the wrong spot So maybe the eyelash could be pointing up a bit more. More like that. That looks better proportion wise. So we'll give this an iron again real quick. Um, oh, well actually we'll build the paws on top now. So these paws go over top. We'll show you the method here so you're going to and then if you look at the drawing you can show that the paw we are going to have to lift this white of the muzzle there just to tuck the paw in you can see on the picture that um, it does stop right there. So we can use the light board again for this part. To give us good placement. So we're going to go ahead. I'm going to... Now this has been ironed down. So it's going to take a little bit more force. To lift that no nuzzle, muzzle just a little bit. But it will iron back down. So following with the light board, you can see I'm just going to see where those fingers line up and push down and just line it up where it shows it should go. Now you can also add heat to the, to the uh, raccoon's face to allow these to lift a bit better than what they're lifting for me right now. It's just that underlay there is being a bit of a pain. So it was being a little bit too hard to lift uh, the whites of his muzzle here. So I went and heated it up. It peels back a lot easier once you've heated it up. Um, and then once we've laid the paws back down and heated up again with pushing them down, it will adhere right back into the same spot it was. So it's not a problem. It's very friendly, user friendly doing that with the steam seam as well. So I'm going to go ahead and push the muzzle back down over that paw. And then you can see that this paw actually lands into the roots, not the roots, but the grain, the, tr the, the knot in the tree. Um, so we want to make sure that his paws are not adhered down until that time comes. So you just peel those fingers back just a bit, tuck in one of the pieces you used that was on the back of one of the pieces you already laid and uh, just push them down and let them stick to that. And then that way when we go to place this down, those paws won't be getting in the way. I have a piece of the used steam seam here. I'm gonna use this to work underneath the paw to keep it from sticking down until we're ready to place the raccoon over the knot in the tree. So you can just lay it down here and then lay your paw down where it's supposed to go. 
we'll push the no nozzle muzzle back down now that we're got our paws in the right placement and we will make sure that's done on both sides and then we will go back over and we will iron the raccoon's face one final time. So once we're done this, this is raccoon number one, right? So we are going to move on to raccoon number two above here, um, which we won't show you. We'll show you the end result, but just keep in mind the same thing with the paw. So there's a paw on the left side over here. You're going to do the same thing that we just did. And then over at the top, there's going to be one more for the last raccoon. We've built all three raccoon heads and look how cute these are. You have to give it to Tony Whitney for being a genius when it comes to raw edge applique. These, these are gorgeous. They peel off so easy for us to do our placement that we're gonna do in a second, but you just have to take a second to admire these little puppies. They're just gorgeous. So we're gonna bring them over to our light board again. And we're going to follow the instructions. And from what we can see, we're going to build from the first raccoon up. So we are going to take the first raccoon and I'm just going to look at his ears here and place them the best I can with the ears. We're going to, we're going to get all three of them on the same applique pressing sheet. So I'm just, I find the one spot where it lines up and just kind of pinch it down a little bit. The other spot with the ear, he's going to be perfect right there. Oh, he shifted just a little bit. So, right there. You can take the applique sheet down if you want to keep it from moving. We are gonna pick um, raccoon number two. And you can see it's gonna be the one with the paw on the right side. So the raccoon is going to have one ear from raccoon number one lay over the cheek of raccoon number two, whereas this side over here is gonna have all of raccoon number two on top of raccoon number one, just to give it that depth. So we're gonna peel this off now, we're done with that. And we are going to lay this raccoon over top. And you can kind of see the lines here where the, the muzzle lines up. We're going to tuck it in right there. So I'm just going off points. You can see points lining up on this side. I can see points lining up on this side. I've got the one ear up and this ear is going to come down on top of raccoon number two to try and cover up all those holes. And then this one's going to lay down right over top. Now we can finally push that paw down. Look how cute that is. It's a little buddy. Hand over his friend. Okay, so now that's number two. Give that a little push. Um, and work on putting number three over top. So number three is the opposite. So now number two's ear is going to be on the right side of um, the raccoon number three. And then the paw of raccoon number three is going to be over the left side of this raccoon. Now it depends on your preference. I always say right or left as if I am the raccoon. Uh, that's just the way I see it in my mind. So lift this ear over here, just get this lined up with the pattern underneath. Lift this ear. We're gonna you can see how this is cut a little bit here with a little point. That's because this is the spot where it's tucking in behind and then the actual nose is coming over top. So we'll tuck that in there. Now I've looked, I've got points lining up on this side so I can go ahead and just give this a little pat down. This side is lining up over here. Give that a pat down, let this ear fall, let the paw fall, and we have all three of them together. So we'll pull this over here so you can see them without being on top of a light board. Like, look at that. That's so cute. We are now gonna iron this again. Once again, we're gonna fix these three together, um, keeping these paws lifted because they are gonna go over the knot in the tree. But there you have it. Three raccoons are completed and we'll be ready for a top stitch once we've attached them to the background. All right, we started the knot 
So we, we just follow the instructions. It's the same as the raccoons. You are going to place them down in numerical order on, obviously our pressing sheet was taken up by the raccoons and we thought they looked so cute there we didn't want to upset them. So we decided to use some parchment paper just to show that it also works. Um, this one's a little bit more tricky in placement just because the pieces feel like they want to move around on you. So as me and Delilah built this, we did use just regular scotch tape to uh, just little squares of it in, in corners to hold the pieces down. So once we were happy with the placement, we brought it over to the ironing table and we ironed it down, but we ironed down spots that didn't have tape. So you gotta remember to take the tape off before you iron that spot because you don't want that tape adhesive coming off and, and gunking up the top of your quilt top. So, so we did that, we are happy with the placement. Um, if you look with the light, you can see this is the end of K10 and the top of K8 is over here, which are our points that I'm going to use as a reference. So we are going to place them like so. Now we can go ahead and tape this down into place so it doesn't move on us while we're going to place the raccoons where we want them to be. So just again, make sure you got the placement you want. You can see with the ears of the raccoon and um, the cheeks and everything that uh, they are going to lay down inside. So you want to try and get rid of any open spots that aren't raccoon, you want to cover those up because you want the raccoons to take away any void area. So that looks good. I like that spot right there. So just a little piece of tape over there and a little piece of tape over here. Okay, so now we can, this is going to be nice and easy because we fused our raccoons together already. So we are going to peel from the bottom here. We can get rid of these now. The paws will now be in over the knot of the tree. So we'll go ahead and peel these off. Our applique pressing sheet comes off very easy, holds together very strong. Uh, it's wonderful stuff, this light seam seam too. So we're gonna look for placement now. Obviously we want the ears to be where they are on here, blocking any of the voids. So it's very important you get your placement just right to hide any of the open spots. You can see just a little bit there that when the when this is on the background, you won't see that anyway, so that's perfect. So I'm I'm very happy with that placement right there. Let's kill the light and we'll... Uh... So I'm very happy with the placement right there. So I'm gonna give it gentle pushes down just to set them in place. And we will be ironing this whole piece now to make it one solid piece. Again, we've done this 10 seconds, give or take, in one spot. Uh, no steam, just straight heat. It's so cute. It's ridiculous. It's so cute. That's amazing, the detail on that, eh? This is me quick doing it without actually doing it quick. So they'll think I'm doing it fast. Hmm. But I'm not actually. Oh my god, they're so bloody adorable. Just like that, eh? All right. All right, so there we are. The end result of this is just absolutely gorgeous. Like for the amount of work you're doing with the actual pieces, it's not very much work. The hardest work of this whole quilt seems to be the tracing and the cutting out is the hardest part of this quilt, which isn't even that hard if you think about it. But look at that, that's gorgeous. Beautiful fabrics. She did a fa Tony did a fantastic job. So we've ironed our background, fabric number nine, um, and we are going to lay it down over top of the template to to the best of your ability, with lining it up for um, the same amount extra over top of the hash marks, uh, where you will be sewing it to your inner border seam. So lay it down to your satisfactory, and then 
light board's nice, window's nice. Window is actually a lot brighter, especially during the time of day it is here. It's about noon. Um, for laying down your rack, but not in your tree. So this will be laid down under your background and the rest of the applique, um, rayage applique will be laid down around the raccoons. So this part is going to be a matter of lining up with your pattern on both sides of uh, the light board or the window, whichever you are using. And when you are happy with your placement, you are going to iron this down. This will be its final resting place. So I'm just just seeing where it lines up with the K's along the along the sides, and where the, uh, the actual tree grain is going to be going around it. But this is I'm happy with this placement. Uh, we used a little bit of tape just to hold the fabric in place, and now we are going to iron these on top of the background fabric and we will be finally done with having to peel these bad boys off anymore so all right we've started on the grain of the tree so the T patterns so uh, we've done 1 through 14 so far you can see how they mimic the grain so I've taped just the top of the quilt top down so I can constantly because it's hard to see we tried it on the window as well just to see where the number is of the next one you're doing. So it's easier to just lift up. I can see 15 is this one. And then I can actually see 15, not the number, but the actual grain of it through. So it makes it easier just to spot where they are. And then I like to start at the tip and work my way down. Um, these ones obviously don't have to be exact because, right, it's the grain of a tree. So it's very natural and flows in every which direction. So I give it a light press down. Number 16's next. Peel your back paper off. Find your point. Right about there. Again, not perfect, not exact, which is just adds to the naturalness of it. And we'll finish all of these up and once we're done again we'll bring it over to the ironing board and iron the the grains down for 10 seconds on each spot and we'll be ready to start working towards the borders okay so we have ironed down the tree grains um, after we place them all we're now going to do the leaves and I believe it's one through eight right now some of the other ones are gonna be incorporated into the other backgrounds the stipling so we just need to work on uh, one through eight so far. So again, I laid this back down where I had it before, made sure my grains look like they've matched up and I just taped the top corners so I can lift. You can also, right, this is just my method of doing it. You can also use your vinyl sheet if you wanna do it that way. Um, light board, it's really whatever your preference is. So I just don't, I don't really mind that I can see the leaves through the background here that I'm just going to go ahead and place them. Okay, now we iron them down again. Just giving them 10 seconds on each leaf to press those down and then we'll move on to the next part of the instructions. So after we finished the first set of leaves that was L1 through 8, um, we ironed them down. We actually gave the whole quilt another iron. It doesn't hurt. Um, just for when you're moving it around, it'll, things will hold better. Now we've squared the quilt up. Um, I was very detailed in the squaring this time because I wanted it to be perfect as per Tony Witness instructions. So you're doing 12 and a quarter by 23 and a quarter um, for the backing for the quilt top here. So now we're going to, as per the instructions, I've cut two strips, full length strips, one inch of fabric number 13, I think, it, number 13, the black. And we are going to do our straight vertical stitch. Once we've done that, you can cut that end off and then what you have extra will end up being used for the top or bottom. That's why we have two strips. So we're gonna do a one inch seam 
all the way or a one inch border all the way around with a quarter inch seam. We've changed our thread to black, our bobbin is black. I've set my uh, needle position so it's a quarter inch um, and we will sew this down. So depending on how you like to do it, if you like to pin, uh, pin your fabric down or you just go for it without worrying about it, it's up to you. So I'm going to just line it up half decent with my edge and then I run my edge along the side of my foot is how I like to do it. Um, Delilah, she has a little ruler. She sticks down onto the actual uh, base of the machine here and then she butts her fabric right up against it. There are feet that have a little guide that don't allow you to go past um, the quarter inch. So we all do it the way that I'm used to doing it. With just lining up the edges and going for it. So I always like to start about a half inch into my quilt, drop my needle and do a back stitch. I just like to lock every stitch in that I do. So then as long as I'm going, I'll just try and keep that stifling border flush and lining it up with the foot of my machine and just checking it every once in a while as I go. And then I'll finish it off with a back stitch as well. So we'll get it right to the edge and do a back stitch. Right, so now this will, when we open this up, we will uh, iron that down nice and flat. And then when we sew on the next border to this, it'll turn this one inch border into a half inch border uh, with the quarter inch seam allowances. So we're now gonna do this other side. And then once I've done the straight vertical, I'm gonna cut this off and do the same for the top. So once you've done both sides, then you will sew your top one into the both sides that you've already done. All right, so we have moved on to the 3D leaves. This is an awesome effect that Tony Whitney has added into this quilt. And we're gonna go through the process, process of making them 3D. Now keep in mind, this is earlier in the instructions, but we decided to do it after we did um, the top quilt top um, and this is L9 through 21 minus L13. L13 is not a 3D leaf it just is a leaf that gets stuck on once that half inch border or the one inch border has been added to the quilt top. So now to touch onto these you're going to need these two fabrics right here which are come in the kit. Two sheets of uh, steam a seam. It recommends a little bit bigger of a sheet but you know us here at cottage treasures quilting we like to save as much money as possible so we're going to use eight and a half by 11s and we're going to make it work so each leaf of the 3d this is l14 flip them over and put a sticker or a piece of tape with a label on it saying l14 or whatever the corresponding number is with your leaf because you are not going to know what they are anymore once you've peeled the backing off so that's important to make sure you do that and we are now going to add our steam -a seam to our fabric. So you're going to peel off the one section here and stick it onto here and um, so, uh, not steam it, sorry, iron it down. And then you're gonna wanna do the same over here as well. Once that is done, we are going to stick these together. This is going to be fusible web to fusible web sandwich. This is building thickness um, to your leaves. And once we have stuck these together and cut them out, we are then going to stick these on top of it. 
Um, this is going to give us that thickness. Once we have stuck them all on top of the, two, the sandwich, we will then free motion quilt the edges as well as the veins of the leaf. So we're gonna go ahead and start by sticking one of these sheets down here. Great, remember grid patterns up. That's one. Same thing. Now we iron them. Okay, now we're steaming down the full sheet here. Um, nice thing to remember is um, you know when it's been s s ironed down because of the coloration difference. So if you zoom in here, you can see that the color changes once it's been uh, ironed down. So roughly 10, 10 seconds uh, in one spot, uh, depending on how hot your iron is. So we're gonna go ahead and iron both of these down. And then I'll meet you back at the cutting table and we'll go into the next process. We have ironed them down now. You can see through the transparency. We are now going to stick them together. We're going to make our sandwich. So there's no easy way to do this other than to just go ahead and flip it over. I did trim them up on one edge so I had a bit of an edge to play with. Um, so I just pick a corner here. So those are now fused, stuck together. So we now have a stiff, we now have a sandwich here that we are going to put these leaves onto. So we are gonna fit all of these leaves into one spot. So I recommend before you even peel the back off, let's go ahead and make sure that we can make these all fit. And you wanna start from the center of your fabric and work your way out so you do have corners to pull around while you're quilting. Just want to make sure that they all fit. here. So I'm actually going to move them more into the center. Once you're happy with your placement, go ahead and start peeling your backings off. And sticking them down. We are going to iron this once we're done this process before we take it over to the machine and free motion quilt them into place. You don't have to necessarily free motion quilt them in place. I find free motion quilting uh, with that foot just gives me the most uh, path of least resistance for jumping around and moving, so. All right, there we go. They are all now stuck down. Um, we're going to go over to the iron ironing table and iron them down, give it some heat. Um, but we are gonna, I think we're gonna do one leaf at a time. We're gonna pull the stickers off uh, just so that this adhesive doesn't come off the sticker and stick to the leaves. And then I'll meet you over at the quilt table. 
So we've brought our uh, leaves, our external leaves, over to the sewing machine. We got our free motion foot on and we are practicing what threads are going to work because you remember we built a sandwich here so it was steam a seam, steam a seam glued together and then our leaves also had steam a seam on them so we had to figure out a way to get through three thick layers. You can see it's it's pretty it's pretty tight. So we tried regular 40 weight thread and it was snapping quite often. Um, we tried it in brown, we tried one of our green uh, thinner threads that didn't work very well. So we switched over to Aurafil 40 slash 3 weight. It's 3 ply and so far so good. So we're going to go with that and we're going to take a sticker off when you do a leaf. Just take a sticker off, stick it to the side, finish the leaf. Put the sticker back on and that's just so when we cut these out and we're getting ready to place them when we're sewing them into the border we know where they came from and where they need to go so i'm just gonna sew these last five or six these green ones are very hard to see because they they blend in with the background and uh, then we'll be ready to cut these out So you can see I'm not using any gloves or a Teflon sliding sheet. Um, this slides very well. Uh, there's no bunching up because of the three layers of steam seam. So I don't, I didn't really, it's a little bit of laziness at the same time. It's just, this slides around so easy with all the layers that you don't really need to have your Teflon sheet down or your gloves on. I've finished sewing all the leaves. Now we're going to cut them out. Now, with all the steam and seam and stitching, you can see the backside's just as beautiful as the front. Um, the the machine really did have to do some work to get through uh, the, all the layers, but it worked out nicely. Now we're going to cut them out, and they are going to be raw edge to finish. So you're just going to cut along with uh, the top steam seam piece um, and follow through that and. Don't cut through any of your stitching and that's the way that they are going to be so i would just right off the bat cut them out roughly you might need some good scissors and then yeah like i said you're just going to cut along the edge and this is going to be raw edge at the end so you don't need to be super picky but our cutting skills are already at their peak after all the pieces we cut out for this quilt. So I'm just going to cut this right to the edge here and just show you what it's going to look like. So it's raw, right? What you got, you've got three layers of fabric with three layers of steam seam and that's what's going to help with the 3D pop when these are coming off of the quilt. So we're going to go ahead and cut all of these out. All right, so we are getting ready to attach those leaves and that being done, we're going to pin them. We'll show you how to pin them to the quilt and then you're going to be sewing this inch and a half border fabric 12 around what we already have and the leaves will be sewn into them. These are going to be the 3D leaves that stick out. So we're just cutting these two, this fabric down to two inch and a half strips so we can manage all the borders. I squared it up before I cut it. Oh, stuck a little bit here. Might be time to change the blade. All right, fold it in half. We ironed it, folded it in half, and then I squared it up before I cut the first inch and a half seam. So in the pattern next, it tells us to place and pin L9 through 13. L13 in the pattern does say 
it doesn't say 3D, but it's included in the 3D ins um, instructions. Uh, we read them a couple times. It doesn't get added into the sandwich. You can see it down here. It is uh, one layer of steam seam, so we've gone ahead and added that one in. Um, it'll just be sewn into the border, just like the rest of the other eight leaves that would have been done. So now we're working on 9, 10, 11, and 12, because 13's already added down there. Using the placement guide now, you can use your your plastic sheet, the vinyl sheet, to lay them perfectly. Uh, we just eyeballed them with the pattern, and they are going to literally sit on the, the uh, straight edge, on the edge of your last border we sewed, right? And this is going off how they are placed within um, the placing guide. So we've laid them like that. So we are then going to sew our long strips along the side and then the cutoffs from those will be used for the top and bottom border. And you're gonna see that this will be hidden. You'll, you'll lose the quarter inch seam allowance, right? So we wanna pin these in place so they don't move on us when we're trying to sew these borders on. So you can go ahead and take your stickers off now because we know exactly where these are going. Um, you're gonna have to make it stay um, because there is quite a few layers of steam seam. So whichever best way it works to pin them. Alright, we're going to sew our border on the side first. Um, you want to maybe leave a little bit of overhang if you want of this top uh, border, but you want that flush because we're going to end up sewing the top border on after. So you can either, depending on how you roll, whether you have a little guiding piece of plastic that gives you your quarter inch seam allowance, I just set the machine to a basic stitch and then I move my needle over with a ruler underneath to the quarter inch and then I just line up my edges with the edge of my foot. That's just my preference. Um, you can pin your border to the fabric if you want. I'm just going to run with my eye and again if you want to make sure you can iron your seams one more time to make sure they're ironed open and uh, here we go and then we will see after this first stitch here how our borders how our border looks with our new leaves um, again I always do a back stitch to lock in my stitch And then as I go, I just adjust my strip to make it flush with the piece underneath. And then I'm just going to kind of lift it a little bit just to see the placement of my leaf. And make sure those straight edges of the edge of the leaf are still straight with the, the edge of the fabric. And I'm going to go through that nice and slow. So that first leaf, number 12, is now locked in place. And again, when you get to the end, a little back stitch to lock it in place. It's just good practice. Go right to the end, and then a back stitch. And we are going to iron this seam open. But as you can see, we can now take that pin out. That leaf is now attached to the border. And that will be 3D, that will stay like that. All right, we've made our quilt sandwich. So we have our quilt top, we've got our, our uh, batting, and we've got our backing. We're not going to worry about basting this or painting it. It's such a small project. I mean, we have a pretty small throat here on our machine, but I can hit the center of this quilt when I just touch the inside of my throat. So I'm not worried about um, using any spray or pinning this one down this time. So. I've transferred my machine over to free motion. I've changed my foot. 
Um, I have changed my needle to a brand new needle just because of all the steam seam here. I just want um, my machine to have the less work. Uh, the tensions are changed. You have to change your tensions. Um, we've got our white thread on because we're going to start with the white, work our way from the inside of the quilt out. We've got our sheet and our gloves. Um, our, 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 not our pressing foot, but yeah, our pressing foot tension has also been let off as well as our feed dogs are down inside the machine. Um, every machine's different, so you just bring out your instructions and it'll show you how to switch over to free motion quilting. This is not going to be a very um, extensive free motion quilting like we've done in lots of videos. This one, we're tacking down our steam seam pieces and we're going to let the pieces do the, the talking for this instead of our free motion quilting. So um, I'm going to get started, start with the whites, work our way out. I'm going to switch between white, gray and black thread today. So we are just tacking pieces down, right? That's all we're doing with this free motion on this quilt. So the reason why I'm not going around the nose is because this white piece from placing the pieces we know that this center nose is over top of it so when I do the black it's also going to lock in the white. Um, one thing to note too before you start free motion and when you switched over your, your uh, machine to free motion is always good to take a practice piece of fabric out from your drawer which I have lots of sandwiches I've made and practice and flip over to make sure your tension is good. It's always good to mimic whatever you have here. So I didn't mimic it with uh, there being steam seam in there, but I am gonna quickly just flip mine over to see how my tension looks. And I'm happy with that. I'm gonna leave it at this setting and it should be good to do the whole quilt. It's not too thick. Nothing is as thick as these leaves were, so it should be a breeze for your machine. So I've done that center nose and since I'm already on white, I'll just jump over to the eyebrows. Right, this is raw edge, so don't worry about having to go right to the edge. I'm usually about two or three millimeters away from the edge. This steam seam lasts forever, so if you ever see a piece that looks like it's lifting up, just bring it over to the ironing board. And this is what we are going to do, is just tack down all of these pieces. So I'm going to work my way through the whole quilt, hands, everything. I am going to just do a stitch close to the edge. That's all I'm doing. I'm not doing any flowers or swirls or nothing in between. We are going to let the pieces do the talking and we're just stitching down the, the fabric. All right, to reiterate the free motion quilting again, everything is steam -a seam down. So we're just tacking it down. You can see any area that was white, I used white. Um, anywhere that was a blend of lighter to darker, I used gray. And then as soon as I moved out to the darker browns and blacks and the knots, I used black. So you can see this is all in layers, right? So once I tack down this with gray, this brown is now locked down underneath. And then I did this, brown, the black on the brown here, and then it locks down the black. Um, so we're not doing any elaborate uh, free motion quilting inside. We are just tacking down our steam -a seam uh, pieces. Uh, you can see the eyes. The eyes were a little bit tricky just with the little uh, the lights of the eyes. Um, so I I kind of filled in what the whole white of the eye was with thread just to tack it all down. And um, I actually uh, even used a little bit of a felt pen here because I had taken up some of the spots where the little bump was in the eye. So I used a little felt pen. So now I did the whiskers. The whiskers, all I did was just run off of the guide. You can see them uh, they're hard to see, but you can see them in there. It looks like they used a gray thread. I'm using white. Uh, there's no particular um, order that you have to do them in. I just kind of did what I felt was right with a whisker. 
So you can see they look pretty good. You just start small with the little ones at the bottom, just kind of going almost directly down and then slowly build your way up as you go. So I'll go ahead and do the last guy up at the top here for you. And so the biggest thing is locking in that stitch because you're just doing a straight line. So I go back, I go forward about a, a thread length and then back over to the one I just did and then forward again and I just kind of lock that stitch in place. And then I'm just going to nice and slow droop that down. And now when I've hit the end of it, I'm going to go back a stitch, forward a stitch, and then cut it. That way I'm just locking that um, whisker into place. And then I just move up about um, the edge of my free motion foot there to start the next one. Like I said, whiskers are just, uh, they're not perfect on cats or animals, so I'm not too over fussy about them being exactly perfect. Again, a back stitch, forward stitch just to lock that whisker in. Right, and you can see they're getting longer with every whisker I do. And then the last one will come almost straight out to the side and then start to droop down. And there you go, there's one side of the whiskers. And uh, what I found was when I started the first one, I wasn't too happy with them the way they looked. And I just went ahead and did the other side and it, it just works out. Don't worry about being picky on them. Whiskers are very irregular on animals. So just, uh, just use the guide if you want to and see where the whisker kind of goes over the hand of the next raccoon. Those are good, good tip on where to place your whiskers, but uh, they look cute nonetheless. So before we bind the quilt and do our final leaves that are built into the binding, we're going to square up our quilt. Um, there's no easy way to square up a quilt when you have extra. So we're going to go, and I'm just going to go off the center of the noses of the, of the raccoons and see what I'm looking like um, down at the bottom with my um, black border. Um, so I'm just going to put my ruler down center see what it does it looks like it slants just a little bit i'll flip it over here just a little bit so we want to get one side square so i'm going to start with the bottom that way now i have a spot i can lay my uh, bottom of my quilt up against my cutting board because we know the lines on our cutting board are straight. Then I line up with the line on the cutting board with the bottom of where I just cut and then I'm just going to follow a line up to the top and see how we look for squareness. So now we have two sides square, 
it's quite it's quite square actually if you look at it we're not losing very much uh, fabric so that's good so then we can line up the bottom line here with the spot we just squared up again pick a line on your cutting board on the top and bottom that you're going to use as your squaring line And the left side, you can always, now that you've got four corners, you can line them up here, just see how your squaring went. Okay. All right, so now we have a square quilt. Now this is where you bask in your glory of what you've just created. And then get ready to bind it the way um, you bind it. If you stitch in the ditch, uh, we use our Janome binding foot, which we will show you in a minute. And we're hoping that there's enough room between our attachment and our presser foot that uh, we can slide in the uh, last of the leaves while we're binding it. Cause that's our favorite way of binding. So we'll head over to the machine. All right, so two inch strips for our binding because we are using our uh, Janome binding foot. And I'm um, just gonna show you real quick how I attach my binding to make one continuous loop. So I lay them down like that. Um, I use a Mark Be Gone pen or pencil, whatever you have here to mark a line. And then I go ahead and I always do a front stitch and a back stitch always. So I'll go ahead and go back. So then I cut this about a quarter inch from my seam that I just made, and then we'll have one continuous strip uh, for us to feed into our binding foot. So as we get ready to do our binding, we just cut it and made one single length. Number, num number 19, leaf number 19 in the instructions is asking you to tack it down before you start the last process here. Number 20 is gonna be put into the binding but it is going to swing in and cover number 19. So we're just gonna go ahead and tack number 19 down here. And this doesn't have to be anything special, we're just looking at getting it locked in place. All right, so I'm just gonna go back and forth like two, three times, just to make sure that it's good and locked in place. And now when number 20 gets sewn into the binding, we'll now have two 3D leaves on top of each other. All right, so using our place piecing guide that Tony Whitney supplied us, we are now gonna lay our leaves down and pin them into place. Um, if you look at the pattern, it kind of shows these being off by about a you know, a quarter inch seam allowance. We're just gonna butt them up to here because our binding's gonna come in um, just under a half inch. So we're putting them basically where we want them to be and we're gonna pin them in place. Now, remember to keep your pins away from where you're sewing so we don't uh, end up hitting our needle onto a pin. So just place these where you feel like they feel good using that piecing guide. The 
it's going to be a wonderful effect once this is done with all of these nice 3D leaves. Right, so that's that side. And then we do have the top corner left. So really just have your piecing guide next to you and you can see where you want things to line up. So it looks like this one's just going to end up touching right about here. Okay, these are all pinned in place and ready to go. Um, so if your binding is not your forte, because I know it's my least favorite thing to do, uh, we do have a video coming out soon um, with some tips and tricks on how to uh, get over that frustrating aspect of binding. So we'll go ahead and start binding this. All right, so we've got our binding foot. We've already started and gone through one of our corners, so we thought we would show you uh, the tacking of the leaves here, so. So just with how thick they are, I'm just gonna help guide them in. Alright, so those leaves are now locked into our binding. So we can go ahead and pull the pins out. And those leaves are now free to jump around. Well, we've completed it. Who, What, Where by Tony Whitney. This beautiful art quilt with the 3D leaves, um, all fusible web, um, minimal quilting. Um, stunning color she's chosen. I really do love these 3D leaves. I think they're going to be uh, a real hit at the quilt shows. Um, so again, we have them in either just the pattern alone or if you would like a pattern with the wonderful fabrics that Tony Whitney has put together for this quilt. This is Cottage Treasures Quilting. I'm Ale Dupuis. Um, thank you for joining us. Please leave comments down below. Subscribe to our channel. Likes, everything is appreciated. Um, we do have another Tony Whitney coming out right away, which is the Wood Duck. Uh, once you've done one Tony Whitney, you can do them all. They really, they're all exactly the same and her process is foolproof um, to complete these quilts. So thank you for joining us and um, until next time, this is Cottage Treasures Quilting.